Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and this is a series where we create a haunted house inside of Unreal Engine 5. If you have not already seen the previous episodes of this series, feel free to check them out below in the description. And this one specifically, we will be covering actually the texturing of our environment overall and just setting up our first pass. So really quickly, I am actually going ahead and throwing together just a base material um, inside of the engine. What I'm doing here is I want to just try to get all of my materials in as quickly as possible uh, that I've kind of created inside of Substance Designer. Uh, I think Substance Designer, of course, is great as a tool. Uh, if you have not previously used it, uh, of course, it uses and creates tiling textures. Um, but I really like the the use of tiling textures as well as trim sheets to build out environments because I think it really does save a lot of time and um, is extremely efficient, especially with like memory costs and uh, everything else kind of just considered. Um, so as I was saying. You can see that I'm already going ahead and throwing in a couple of these textures that I created. Um, just setting up a simple pass, at least of them, uh, and then throwing in even, uh, as you see here, um, basically making instances from those as well. That way I can quickly change out the textures and uh, get them all in on my props. So with those assets that I'm also uh, applying the materials to it's really nice since we built our mod kit that I can now you know apply the material to that one mod kit piece and it's going to update in the entire engine so anywhere that that mod kit piece is if I need to change it per instance I can um, but I do think it's really nice in that manner because you're able to really quickly um, pretty much texture your entire scene if you have a uh, just a couple pieces you know like 10 or so mod kit pieces you throw in your materials to all of those and it's pretty much ready to go so um, and the instancing as well of course we're starting with our simple and basic one here that uh, we set up a, a simple material and then we're instancing it and then um, basically changing out the textures to get a couple of the variations um, and that's just nice because of course yeah you only have to build it once and then you can pretty much get it into the engine um, for all of your textures every time you bring in something new um, but now what I want to do is actually set up a world aligned material um, and I'm going to change my uh, actual master material over that I have to be world aligned. Uh, reasoning behind this is just because, uh, of course, the UVs, like I have my stuff UV'd, um, but it can be a little bit easier to work with if you don't have to uh, like constantly make sure everything's perfectly aligned and all, um, as well as the tiling amount. Uh, it Yeah, it can just be especially for like that that initial like throw in of the materials um, it could be really nice to get that iteration in quickly um, and what I want to do with this as well is I do want to try to keep it consistently uh, as a massive material as I was saying uh, this way when I do get uh, like other textures and everything that I want to throw in um, I've already set it up once I don't have to do it again and I can just grab an instance and replace it with the the new textures that I'm going for and then change the tiling amount and everything there so uh, definitely think setting up those and then having all those parameters available uh, definitely help with the um, yeah the speediness of it all but uh, again, kind of going into, you know, the reasoning behind some of this stuff is uh, I think tiling textures and trim sheets as well, uh, especially with environments. Um, the one of the goals, especially with this environment, is to try to avoid uh, having almost any baked uh, assets, uh, mainly because, you know, just like the the memory costs as well as the time um, like just constraint that it takes uh, to build out all of that and we're just trying to build this uh, environment pretty efficiently and quickly um, so I'm thinking that with the trim sheets and the tiling textures placing it on everything uh, I think it's just going to uh, building it out that way is going to speed up our workflow really quickly 
Um, and of course there's going to be things where, you know, we can't necessarily do that. Like the pumpkins or so where we probably do need to have a one-off bake. Um, but I think trying to run, especially with a building like this, that has so many of the same materials, uh, then I think it's, it's a great way to try to be efficient and, um, really knock this out with only a couple of materials. So, um, and again, as you see, like some of these materials that I am applying to like the stairs or my actual, uh, patio or porch that I have, uh, they're not necessarily the, uh, final materials that's going to be on that location. Uh, just trying to get the, the block out material replaced with something that has a little bit of detail and definition just to see how much that I really need into my model. Uh, you know, how much am I going to have to put into the textures and so forth with a lot of that. So again, going back, kind of finalizing my world aligned uh, material. And uh, what I want to also do is I'm going ahead and setting up a vertex paint. Um, so this is going to be for really painting in some of the white paint, uh, kind of that would be chipping off of this, uh, imagining that it's, you know, with this abandoned dilapidated house, this is kind of the base wood that we have underneath it. Um, but then adding it on where I can vertex paint, uh, so I'll basically have this base layer. I'm going to paint on my um, paint and then where I need to pull it back, uh, I will. And so, um, yeah, basically it's just going to be the process of setting that up. Uh, just need to flip my channels real quick. There we go. So yeah, because I want to have, um, by default it not painted and then add the, the paint, um, but this is really going to, with vertex painting, of course, uh, allow me to have a lot of control in the engine, especially since I'm using tiling textures and trim sheets. I'm not necessarily doing anything in substance painter where I'm doing a ton of like, uh, you know, custom painting and really making perfect masks and all. Um, instead what I'm trying to do is break up the repetition of the materials uh, in the engine. And so vertex paint is a great way to do that as well as decals and, and so forth with a lot of those. So, uh, I'll probably have a couple of more actual layers, uh, to this material, um, that offers some more, um, vertex paint capabilities, but yeah, really the, the main thing that I'm doing now is kind of, uh, placing everything in its location. Uh, that way it's really ready to go. Um, when we start to, uh, really quickly, um, replace a lot of these things, both with like, you know, more finalized textures as well as more finalized models. Um, they'll just quickly be able to, uh, yeah, update. Um, and it'll be pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, just finalizing one more time with the, the trim sheet up top and some of the railings, then also going to do the, the bottom, um, actual like banisters and porch as well. Um, just this process in general, uh, setting it all up, I think is, uh, pretty nice to get things to be ready when we get to that, that stage. So, and, um, I think with the vertex paint as well, I'll, add it to my ground uh, when we get a ground material in here uh, and actually paint out, you know, a variation where we have our walkway and pathway as well as our grass and all. Um, but I think a combination of a lot of this stuff, you know, even with just the materials that I have so far in here, um, I think the, the mood and everything's really going to cater to the possibility of how quickly we're trying to, um, build this out with, you know, a, not a ton of actual, like I would say extreme modeling and texturing with it. Um, trying to keep it simple, but still get to that high quality bar, uh, with the, the modeling and texturing, um, just through the efficiency that we're really trying to hit with that. So I'm going to, yeah, pretty much just bring over a couple of other materials. Um, think this is great because, uh, as I said, have the instance or have the master material already set up. So now I can just actually, uh, bring in new textures and, uh, set them up with the instances. 
But uh, now I'm getting my grass in here, uh, which is just a uh, simple grass that I made in Substance Designer as well. Um, and the idea behind the grass really is I want the the fall kind of uh, almost dead like grass. You know, it, it still has um, some dampness to it, especially since this is probably more of a humid climate. Um, and I think like, but I, I don't want it to be super lush bluish green grass. Um, I am going for that more yellowish green. Um, so trying to hit on that. And, uh, I think this of course is going to be our base layer and then we're going to put geometry grass on top of it. Uh, but really the, the idea is just trying to sell this, um, you know, what we have at the moment so far. So I um, think it, it's starting to work and of course it is, you know, materials change the mood a lot. So uh, you'll probably notice that it's getting a little bit brighter in here. Um, it doesn't feel as spooky. Uh, so these are things that we definitely have to consider as we continue forward with our materials as well as, you know, when we do that next pass of lighting and all. Um, so we'll definitely probably have to tweak some stuff to, uh, get it a little bit more towards that, uh, the vibe and the mood that we're going for. Um, but it's not too bad at the moment. And now what I want to do is similar to vertex painting. I have set up a landscape, uh, material that has, uh, painting capabilities. So as you see here, I can actually just paint in my mud that I have and um, just painting out basically the pathway, kind of the, uh, the space where, you know, it's heavily trafficked or so, um, really trying to help sell our composition. And of course, we're going to come back and actually, uh, you know, fix the threshold, the blends and everything to make it look a lot better. Um, but this is really just that, that first pass kind of look to it. So um yeah besides that though that's about wrapping up this kind of initial look for our textures and i will see you in the next video